recorded live with little or no editing. It's Defense Up. I'm Run7. How you doing? Sorry for the lack of content lately. I have been a little bit sick and everything. I got uh, super depressed, among other ailments. I missed an entire night of sleep, and I was a total wreck. I couldn't stream on Tuesday. Try to catch up. But hey, we're here. We're doing it now. I'm back on task, and I'm feeling great. And I'm feeling great because I got difficulty eight on the Scourge event, and I'm super happy about it. And the reason I got it is because chat helped me out. So if you guys want to get through that Scourge event and do really well, get over on Twitch. Not just Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 to noon in the mornings where I'm at, but anytime you guys should go check out Twitch because there's a lot of great content creators out there that can help you with your Scourge event. I think Reminex is actually running people individually through the event to make sure they get the highest scores and stuff. There's a lot of good stuff you can do, so be sure to get over to Twitch and check it out. But this is Defense Up, where we grade defenses. We grade on who you're using, their placement, their power levels, their ISOs, and what kind of mood I'm in. This is Shay L's defense. They sent it into me and if you want your defense featured on defense up you can find the links down in the description team number one is a merc team nothing excited here a little bit wonky power level uh i think because you have somebody who's like 20k higher pushing up this overall number a little bit uh it's gonna make this team fold easier than it than it should but it's not gonna be a big deal what you really want if your power levels are wonky you want your taskmaster to be by far the biggest and then you want fast mercs that he will um assist off of and you'll get a lot more value out of that if you go the other way around you don't get quite as much value he's all strikers and a skirmisher that's a fantastic setup for isos i really like it you can do other things now the team is countered to heck and back and it's not really that uh worthwhile to go nuts on the isos or even building this team anymore but um if you guys have something interesting to do with taskmaster please show it to me because i like new stuff placement is a mess though we need to swap places with um either let's see here i want to go taskmaster merc lieutenant merc riot guard and then the rest of them is the placement i want this guy does things when people adjacent to him are attacked and so you want people adjacent to him up in this corner so don't have him on the end same thing with riot guard he does adjacent stuff too i'm going to give you a b for that team that placement swap will really help you out there's no need to level out the power levels on this team it's too old to focus on that sort of thing Team number two is a skilletary team. I'm seeing this on defense a lot with Captain Marvel because of that military tag. Placement's fine on this. I kind of like uh, what's her face off to the outside. I don't remember why, but you definitely want her in one of the middle positions. She goes invisible and helps with chain attacks and stuff. Taskmaster is a striker. I like her better as a raider. And then striker striker. Yeah, you could keep her as a striker if you want. She does have an interesting basic, but I don't think... I think it's either going to be skirmish or a raider for me, but I don't know. The team's not great. It's a filler team. Uh, it's a luxury offense team or a filler defense team. I'm going to go a minus on that. Nothing really bad here. You might consider making them war ready. You're pretty close to a decent power level, but that's going to be up to you. You have two people war ready already. You might, yeah, you might make those those other three war ready. Yeah, it's up to you though. Team number three is a PIM tech team, is what it is. We've got the proper placement. We've got the proper ISOs. Um, power levels are good. You might consider going ahead and making them war ready. You've got a decent investment in this team, and you're already at three. You know, it's either one or four with war. Decide if the players, if the tune has value outside of war, uh, you go four. If they don't have any value outside of one, it's usually one ISO, and that's it. Rarely is there a case to not put ISO on a tune we've seen it but rarely does it happen i'm gonna go a minus for this team i would like to see you bring them up to war ready levels even though it's a filler team if you're just building this team just build ghost think about building yellow jacket maybe but probably not this late in the game he's not great but sometimes you need him for certain raid lanes otherwise you just let ghost carry the team use her as a plug and play character team number four is the guardians of the garbage can uh, we went striker, striker, and skirmisher on Groot. I like that. You probably with those ISOs, you're probably better off changing out these two people, going with something like Vision and Minerva or something like that. But honestly, this is a really garbage team. It's so old and outdated. They don't do anything. He's a legendary character, and there are minions in the game that do more damage than he does. So 
Um, I would I would not worry at all about this. Um, probably just leave it the way it is and forget about it. I'm going to give you a B plus for this. But if you're going to use these ISOs, you need to swap these two people out with somebody that does not have a Guardians tag. Or you could go back to their traditional R R ISOs, which would be Raider, Skirmisher, and possibly Healer. But oh my God, don't put Healer on him. And then you leave the team whole. Uh, team number five is the Heroes for Ha... No... Yes, it's Heroes for Hire with JJ. Okay, so this is what's happening now. The Heroes for Hire is being countered so much that people are pulling Shang-Chi off and using him on hybrid offenses and specialized defenses. So they're putting JJ back in here because she has a cleanse and it's you're not using her anywhere else. It's something to do. And um, honestly, depending on your later teams in here, Shay L, we're going to see if this was a good choice or not. Um, I like... I like Misty Knight in the corner with Iron Fist and then and then Colleen. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, I like JJ in, on this build. JJ and Colleen Wing. No, I want JJ and Misty Knight. That's it. I want JJ and Misty Knight on the outsides. So that's going to be it. And then um, Iron Fist here in the middle. If you had Shang-Chi on this, I would say it'd be Misty Knight and Colleen Wing on the outsides. And that way you have Iron Fist or well, you could put Iron Fist on the outside, too. He's not that important. The important thing is that you keep the disrupt off of your Shang-Chi and you use Misty Knight has some of the highest resistance in here. So you want her in a corner also. And then you, you make sure that Luke Cage isn't getting it either. This is fine. You've got good ISOs. You've got good uh, enough placement. I think your build is fine. You're going to want to put her to level four ISOs uh, just to make, you know, that 1.4 ISO. Get her war ready at least. Um, because otherwise, otherwise, man, this is just a straight up four man team and she's not doing anything at all. Uh, keeping her as a skirmisher is good because she'll put out that extra vulnerable. I'm going to give you a B plus for this. Uh, I just think you need to develop your JJ or find somebody better to put in here. I mean, you could put Surfer in here or something too. Go crazy with it. It doesn't have to be JJ. All right, let's see what we got. Team number six is the Emirators, and you put Bishop in here. That's a very interesting choice. Bishop's only going to be in here until prior releases. Bishop is just a pre-taunt tank to cover for the fact that Strife doesn't taunt on the opening move. Honestly, I think it's overkill. I think you should just use Bishop on the Axemen and roll with that team on either offense or defense. You could throw anybody else you want in here um, other than Bishop. You don't need the pre-taunt tank. It's just this team works well enough. If you go a villain mutant in here, then he's going to pop off pretty fast. Like throw in Magneto or something. That's probably going to be a better fit than Bishop. Bishop just has so much synergy with the Axemen team. You don't want to waste it. Hey, let's get some music playing. Okay. Um... So I don't really like who you're using. I understand why you're using it and there is some logic there. So I'm not gonna hit you too hard for it. I just like the Axemen team better as an offense or defense. And otherwise, your ISOs are fine. We are probably going to be using Madeline Pryor as a striker and I would convince other people to have Emma ready as a skirmisher when that happens. Emma's got a pretty good basic and can cleanse and stuff. So it's not too bad to make her a skirmisher for that extra focus boost. I'm gonna give you a B plus for this team. It's not terrible. I just would like to see you use somebody different here. Um, Web Warriors with Doc Ock. This is great. The reason you don't have him off to the outside is because you want him getting the deflects from Doc Ock. Any other time, I would say, you know, separate this team up, get your players away from each other. This is great placement. I think you really thought it out well. You could swap places with Punk and OG Spider-Man for a little bit better, I think. But your Punk Spider's built up enough. Man, he's he's probably tankier than your OG Spider-Man, actually. So I'm going to give you an A-plus for this team. I like that you're using Doc Ock and pulling Miles off for other things. Okay, Web Warriors with Miles in here. This is exactly the way I like to see it, except for Miss Marvel. I don't want Miss Marvel on the outside. Swap her with Echo. Yeah, swap Echo to the corner so that uh, Miss Marvel isn't getting disrupted by a Dark Hunter team. Although there aren't a lot of Dark Hunters coming in at a million. So that's probably not too much of an issue for you and your wars. I'm going to go A for this team. Uh, let's go A minus. Get that placement swap in there. That does bother me. Otherwise, your ISOs are great and placement's good, good enough. Team number nine is a Doom. This is a an old school Doom hybrid. This is one that we theory crafted when Doom was first coming out. 
You got her in there for that cosmic synergy with Doom, plus he does something special just for her. Of course, he's cosmic also, so I guess that doesn't matter. But uh, he does something special with Sue Storm, so that's a good mix there. Plus, she's giving cover to help give him some time. Surfer's throwing in that ability block. You've got Fortifier on everybody. That's interesting. Um, Wow, that's, that's something to do. And then you got Shuri in there to possibly give Doom energy and heal people. I'm surprised Shuri isn't a fortifier on this build, to tell you the truth. Um, it's cool. It's interesting. It's old. But you know what? It's still going to require a serious counter to come into this. So I'm going to give you an A for it. I kind of like this. I think it's pretty good. I don't mind that you're going fortifier across the board. It's just we're trying new things these days to, to keep up with these super powerful teams coming in and just throw a wrench in the works. And here is the America Chavez team that he he uh, swapped out Chavez for for miles. And this is why you want to pull Chavez off. Now, this is interesting, although I think it's a super duper awesome team. I think you are wasting a lot. So you've got Falcon in here off of that SA team and Cersei. Cersei's getting sped up going first, rewinding turn meter, and Falcon's getting sped up going second and uh, increasing the turn meter for your team, speeding them up, making Icarus go off that much faster who rewinds more turn meter, and then Shang-Chi goes who rewinds turn meter with his ult. This is a super powerful and deadly team. Nothing's really going to survive it. However, if I were faced with this team, I would probably throw one character at it, use the energy, and then come back into it with somebody else after you know Cersei and Sam popped off, and then you just have one Icarus alt to deal with. Um, you know, if I had like a really tough character, like a seven red Karnak or somebody who's gross, you know, I could throw them in there and hopefully they would survive long enough for Icarus to pop off. And then you can come back into it and really tear the team apart. But that's two taps. Nobody likes to do a two tap, man. So um, this is going to require probably a Doom Eternals counter or something like that. It's it's really vicious. The thing that I don't like about it is, um, though it's OK to pull Shang-Chi off because that other team has been countered and he's just not adding the value there. I mean, you still need to come into something with that four piece heroes for hire. Um, so you're getting more value out of him on this team. But taking Sam off of that SA team, and that SA team is one of the best in the game, and I don't like seeing it broken up. He's an integral part of that team. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go A- minus for this one. It's really good. It's really powerful, and it's going to work really well. I just don't feel good about pulling Sam off the SA team. So uh, that's Shea L's mix. Uh, they've got some really good ideas going on. They're trying new stuff like this old version here and Miles on this. This is something we're all starting to do here because you can make that valuable Chavez speed up team. Right here, we've got a little bit of a mix up. And then this is something completely different. And I don't know what's going on with the Axeman team, but it's something new and I like new. So I like that Shea L is trying this stuff. Anyway, guys, remember, don't just have a good game. Be good to yourselves and others too. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye.